I just wanted to say we're sorry. We're sorry for uploading the video. We know you've ruined a lot of your Saturday mornings. Look, man. Hey, we're trying to do something special for y'all. If y'all got a problem with that, just unlike us or something. I don't know. Look, we're giving y'all something good. We're giving y'all some heat. It's a good week. It's a lot of shit. Comic-Con this week. Comic-Con. That's, that's all I need to say. But I'm going to say more. But I'm going to let Miles talk. Yeah, no, that, that's it. We got a we got a good video for y'all this week, and we wanted to take our time to make sure we gave you the uh, best experience possible while watching us. Uh, so, all right, that's it. Everyone, have a good night. Uh, enjoy. Peace out. There you go. There you go. What's up, everybody, and welcome back for week eight of Acme News. Today is July 25th, and happy Comic-Con Saturday to all y'all viewers out there. I'm graphic artist and animator Dom Zilla. And I'm a podcaster who really loves cartoons, Miles Tales. Hell yeah, man. Do you know how much I love cartoons? I was waiting, that's why I ain't say nothing. <laughs> well, I love cartoons more than Goku loves shirking his parental responsibilities. Oh. And it's, it's just true, he, he'd rather be dead or training, and sometimes both. Oh, cold, yeah. cold blooded. Well, I hope y'all having a good Saturday. It's um, it's more than just uh, wake up and make a bowl of cereal and watch your day, your morning cartoons. It's fucking Comic Con, and it's sad to say that we have to sit in the house and watch it through a screen. But nevertheless, it's still something pretty entertaining to look into. Such as life. Of course, if you guys don't didn't know Comic Con was this week, be sure to check out our last video that we posted earlier this week. But yeah, so so I'm pretty excited for it. As you can see, my boy Miles is over here sporting the fucking Attack on Titan. Yeah, the, the cape from Attack on Titan. Yes. You can't see it. The symbol is on the back. Hell yeah, man. But uh, it's yeah. been a pretty eventful. It's a pretty fun week. So how's how's your week been, man? It's like how what you been up to? What you watch this week? Uh, I actually started watching some animated music videos. Um, it's been. Pretty interesting to because uh, we actually announced on this show. I think it was the first, maybe the second episode that uh, the the president of Sony or maybe CEO of Sony. I'm sorry, she mm. was talking about how there's going to be more animated content. Mm. And holy crap, has there been an explosion of animated music videos? I mean, the weekend has two. Oh, oh, uh, I didn't know they were going that way. Yeah, uh, Duolingo released a music video. That was the one we were watching earlier. Um, Duolingo? Duolingo, I think that's her name, Duolingo, something like that. Dude, I'm yeah. thinking you're talking about the Spanish app, man. <laughs> Maybe the, oh, Duolingo, yeah. Duolingo, like, I, okay, I, I don't thought remember. the, like, the green bird sitting there rapping, like, that's Look, what I'm saying. I thinking. don't remember the girl's name. I was just clicking on music videos, but she released a new music video. Um... I had heard one of her past songs before, and I figured other people have heard her music. Anyway, uh, and then uh, and then Juice World, the Juice World video that dropped this week too. That one. Oh uh, yeah, I saw you watching that one. So and you were pretty, you were pretty taken away by that by that video. He didn't realize uh, how dark Juice World's lyrics were. Um, yeah. No, the dude. Yeah, that was was legitimately crying out for help. Yeah, I know. Hey, shout out, shout out, Juice World. We love you, man. And, um, um, yeah. So now that the show has been brought down to morbid levels, what have you been up to this week? Oh uh, well, I haven't been watching so much of like you know regular cartoons. I'm watching making behind the scenes, a lot of stuff. Um, I've been studying. I had my book up on on the last episode last week of um, Richard Williams, the um, animators. What is the survival kit? And that book has been pretty crazy. It's got me watching all these. Uh, documentaries on like YouTube and like anywhere I can find them behind the scenes of anything in the making of because of course we're working on our own projects I need as much inspiration and you know concepts like just like I just need my imagination bank filled on a right. regular basis you know so um, yeah I've been watching that a lot of Richard Williams uh, you know rekindling my love for Tex Avery and Chuck Jones cartoons and um, Art Babbitt, and you know a lot of a lot of the crazy, you know, classic animators out there, people that you can look up to. Um, but yeah, that's what I've been up to: research, learning. Yeah, cool. 
Italian comic book artist Mirka Andolfo, the creator of Unnatural and Mercy, Where? Uh, has a new show called Sweet Paprika, based on a flirty devil of a character named Paprika. Andolfo posted on Facebook saying, I'm extremely excited to finally be able to announce animation on hashtag Sweet Paprika Devil, which we've been working on for months with the Grey Ladder and Arencia Studio guys. Uh, the studio is just the series <laughs> is described as Bridget Jones' diary meets Sex in the City and with a little bit of the devil with wears Prada. The devil wears Prada. Couldn't get that out. Uh, yeah. Which you know, good for you. This is actually her character. Very her character. She invented it, came up with the concept and everything. She's been putting it out there for a while now. Yeah. Um. So it's finally being made into a series. Good for you. Yeah. Sure. Probably won't be watching. Nah, nah, you know, it's not my cup of tea. It's not something. I'm, oh, you know what? I, I don't want to bet. If you're into that, check the show out. I'm sure check it's it going to be a good show for the people that like that shit. But, I mean, just for us. But I also hear it's it, it's about sexual liberation and, you know, things yeah. of that nature. So, I mean, like, it's, it's, got, a, it's got its positives. Yeah, no, it's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Again, I, like, uh, I haven't watched all of Sailor Moon, so... Well, no, I mean, you right, don't need yeah. to. Yeah, exactly. Opinion, but <laughs> and I kind of feel like it will be the same way with Sweet Paprika. Uh, you know, let me let me soften the blow there. I watched a pilot to support an artist. She she did this herself, basically. Yeah. So yeah. you know, hell yeah, okay. Support. Yeah. Let's see yes. what cracks. Yeah. Let's see what comes of it. Well, in other news, new Netflix show Hoops has a release date. Mm -hmm. The show which follows a foul-mouthed coach who believes taking his underdog basketball team to the top will turn his life around and impress his father for some weird reason. But it's due out August 21st. The cast includes Jake Johnson as Coach Ben Hopkins, Rob Riggle as his stake house-owning former professional athlete father, <laughs> comedians Natasha Leggero and Ron Futch is playing Ben's estranged wife and compassionate best friend. It's it seemed like a really crazy fucking yeah, show. So, like, that's a huge cast. Oh yeah, that's that's crazy. There's so much more going on there, but I'm I'm looking forward to something like that. I ain't never heard of some a steakhouse owning former professional athlete. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty uh, wild. The you know the last thing that was pretty cool about this is actually being uh, produced by Phil Lord and Chris Miller, who are the same guys oh, that yeah. brought you uh, Spider Man into the Spider Verse. Yes. Uh, so yeah, it looked like. They seem to know funny, or at least storytelling. So we should have a pretty good show on our hands. Oh yeah, I agree. Yeah, so it's gonna be pretty good. I wonder how visually appealing it's going. going to, you know, um, it'll look good. <laughs> I don't know. It's hard. It's kind of hard to imagine how how much they could do with a cartoon like that. With like a, basically a Fox Sunday Night cartoon. I don't know, but Family Guys. I mean, but they're still things, like but, in depth with their creativity. Yeah, really. like, yeah. I don't imagine them just dumbing it completely down. Like you could see the signature that they leave there. You know, right. Yeah. I could imagine. Um, and other news, uh, since Avatar The Last Airbender was added to Netflix in May, it's remained on the service's top 10 most watched TV series list. <laughs> on July 20th, the show fell off the list, but its run of 60 consecutive days on the list is the longest since Netflix started its top 10 lists. Whoa. Uh, coming in second is Ozark with 57 consecutive days and Outer Banks with 51. What? Yeah. You know what's um, so crazy? I would have actually thought that, like, Narcos would have been up there somewhere. It seemed like Narcos was super popular. Yeah, we're definitely, yeah, I thought so, for sure. But, uh, uh, yeah. So it looks like what they're looking for, what people are looking for is in-depth storytelling. Both the uh, mm. both Avatar and Ozark, so they, they're both these super deep stories that kind of get into, like, character studies and... But it's, um, yeah, I'm, no, 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 it's, I'm just really bugged out about the fact that, like, it's not even, it's not even a Netflix original show that's like made it to the top and no in, uh, in their streaming service. It's a whole whole another you know service program. I think before the uh, before uh, Avatar was The Office. Really? Uh, yeah. Um, wow. Which is yeah no you're right like I mean Amazon is really trying. They and, are. And, well, no Ozark is a uh, Ozark is an original. Is an orig old Netflix original? Yeah, no, but yeah, okay, but it's still lost to an original show. That's true. But speaking of Avatar, though, like we saw another article. Oh, I don't know. Do you want to like bring it up or go ahead? Go ahead. Go ahead. Say it. 
You know what? I'll say it. I'll go ahead and say it. And then I'm going to let you touch on this. You know, I'm going to go ahead because I'm not the biggest. So, so it's been, well, we'll, we'll go ahead and, and get specific. CBR posted an article <clears throat> about the people needing LGBTQ representation in Avatar and the, the new live action the, Netflix series that they're, they're remaking for the show, right? Yes. Yeah, I guess somebody complained. I don't know who somebody complained about. I can't remember the woman's name, but uh, they're not being enough LGBT representation in the live action Avatar series. Mm. And look, 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 look. I'm, I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna just say this that we're not we're not in a position to say much, you know, about this. But but just coming from the perspective of like having this black representation. You know, in media and all that stuff. Like, I'll just, yeah. you know, like, sexuality is not as apparent as black skin. You literally have to voice that that person was this or that in order for people to know that in the first place. Capitalizing on someone's sexuality in a in a cartoon show that was for kids. That, like, I kind of feel like that defeats the purpose of equality in the first place. Mm-hmm. Like, it's it's tokenism. Point them out and being like, it's like like what you said earlier, like, hey, this is my friend Dre, and he's gay. Mm-hmm. Like you make it, you making it a point to let everybody know that this is what that is. When really, you don't need to let everybody know. Like if that's what it is, like just let it be. Like we don't go around saying that we're straight all the time. I mean, so I mean, well, my my whole thing is that I don't watch fantasy shows. I don't watch these comic book shows to be reminded of what's going on around me mm. in real life. I watch them to escape. And with that, I don't I have absolutely no problem with there being a member of the LGBTQ uh, community absolutely. on TV or being, uh, or being a superhero or whatever. Oh, yeah. I do have a problem with them being a part of the community before they are the character they are supposed to portray. Mm. Okay. I'd like to see a superhero who happens to be gay rather than a gay person who is also a superhero in front of me. This is and to make it <clears throat> make it a point to know it's that a, this person is what it it's is. It's not a, a sexuality. It's not an identity. Right. Exactly. It's not exactly. a personality. Um, so that's it. <laughs> that's all I have to say. Uh, yeah. We have. I mean, if you guys have anything to say about that, please leave a comment. Let us know. Like we we not we're not here to offend anyone. We just kind of feel like. I mean, just leave leave a comment. Thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, in other news, Netflix is continuing a string of renewing animated series. Glitch Tech from Dan Milano and Eric Robles is coming back for a second season. You may know Milano from his voice work on Robot Chicken and Skeletor and Robles from The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, which is my shit. <laughs> the show follows two kids recruited recruited, I'm sorry, to help fight video game monsters that have come to life. Yeah, speaking of renewals, uh, there was another show, uh, Final Space. Oh, yeah. Was, oh, yeah, yeah, they yeah. were just picked up by Adult Swim. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, oh, shit. And speaking of uh, Adult Swim, today is the last day of the first ever, first ever, bro, Adult Swim Con. Over the past two days, we've seen a robot chicken marathon, the debut of a new show called YOLO Crystal Fantasy, an interview with the Rick and Morty crew, and a showcase for the Samurai Jack video game, which I was super fucking hyped for. Today will be a mystery question and answer where random crew members from various shows will answer questions via Instagram, and a second panel which will be focused on Toonami, and will have updates from their upcoming anime, Uzumaki and Blade Runner Black Lotus. You know, it's, it has been a busy week for Toonami, uh, for Adult Swim, for the Adult Swim. Uh, adult Swim, period, crowd. man. I find it hard to believe that that's the first ever Adult Swim con. I don't know, maybe I fell for like a troll or something from back in the day. But like, Adult Swim is like notorious for trolling. Yeah. Um, I they've always yeah. done shows. They've always done like hidden hidden events, things that um, like I, I don't know. It's just random. It's always like. It's never been like convention based or anything right. like that. It's always been like a show or a, like I remember they they did a pop up show in Indianapolis mm. and Kendrick Lamar that was when he was still coming up like popped up there like and he would perform oh, like wow. so they they do random shit like that. So I mean, but they have not had anything solid like that ever before. So. 
Oh, well. That I know of, at least. Yeah, yeah. Uh, on to the next story. Amazon has revealed the full cast for Robert Kirkman's Invincible series. <laughs> uh, Steven Yuen was announced uh, as the lead character last January, and Zachary Quinto, J.K. Simmons, and Carrie Payton were announced last Saturday. Mm. The full cast will also include Zazie Beetz, Mark Hamill, Chris Diamantopoulos, yes. <laughs> Wilson Goggins, Gray Griffin, and Seth Rogen as Alan the Alien. Right. Okay, look, that is fan fucking tastic. Um, I've read some of the uh, I read some of the comic book series that the show is going to be based on, Invincible, and mm. I love the story. The story is how do you live up to your father's expectations? Yeah, see, I've never heard of when this. your father is Superman. So, like, is oh, it's kind of cool. Like, it, the, the and. I just remember like one of the, the, the coolest things that they did was like they kind of set up this uh, proto, not proto, it was like a, a Justice League copy where they had all these like characters, uh, these archetypical characters set up and then just killed them off right away mm. to let you know that this isn't going to be your typical superhero story. Uh, and, That's the shit that I like. Yeah. I fuck with that shit right yeah. there. So I, this is another story that I never thought would make it to series I always hoped and wish. Mm-hmm. I kind of thought that if anybody was going to bring it to series, it would be me. <laughs> but uh, just not being cocky, just because I didn't think it would ever happen. But it's got an all-star cast, including fucking J.K. Simmons and Mark Hamill, the Joker, is going to be in it. Word. No doubt it's going to be a good one. Hell yeah. I'll check it out. I've never even heard of it, but yeah. I mean, yeah, I'll check it out. I've never even heard of it. I didn't know it was comic book series or anything like that, but yeah, put it on later. In more Adult Swim news, uh, Adult Swim responded to a viral tweet from a Karen who only recently discovered their programming. She seemed to have not been aware that Cartoon Network does not run all day and that her children were watching adult programming. She took to Twitter stating, they hope you aren't the kind of parents who monitor what your kids watch and do. What do you see here? I see witches abusing babies. This is not okay. Adult Swim responded by simply tweeting a screenshot of their warning bumper reminding viewers that some material might not be suitable for all audiences. That's Adult Swim is the That's shit. It. They are so notorious. And like they knew exactly what not to say in this situation. I love it. I don't I love it, dude. That's what, sick is, as fuck. what was this lady? What has she been doing with her time? I have you no know, clue. Like, I thought that parents stopped letting their kids be raised by the television years ago. You know that's not happening, bro, because the television has become portable. These kids are still being raised by television because it's YouTube everywhere. It's all these other things. Uh, and Adult Swim is heavy on, a, on, on fucking YouTube. Like, I'm... You know, that's crazy there. I, as someone who doesn't have kids, I always have to wonder, though. I Think of your nieces and nephews. We watched it all summer all the time. Yeah, I watch that shit all day, so. <laughs> nah, yeah, yeah. Well, seems that we're wrapping up our episode for this week. I thought so. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> but I do have an honorable mention. Oh, what's up? Yeah, man. Yo ass. <laughs> Gorillas dropped a music video this week with Schoolboy Q. Oh, no shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a huge, huge Gorillas fan, and I'm a huge Schoolboy Q fan. Shout out, Schoolboy. Uh, they dropped a music video by the song uh, by the title Pac Man uh, for all you gamer nerds out there. Clearly giving honor to the classic video game Pac Man. It's not just giving honor to that. It's, it's giving about. honor to video games. You just see you it's, see two D you see two D playing playing Pac Man arcade arcade style. That's all you see. It's most of the video. Most, most of the video. Of it, yeah. It's not most of the damn video. It's it's <laughs> all right. It's it's peppered. Okay. Schoolboy Q's in there. He is, you got you got a good amount. They got appreciation for hip hop. Mm-hmm. They got appreciation for animation, mm-hmm. and they got appreciation for video games, all in one. And it's it's done well. And Triple also, whammy. like you know, yeah, gorillas in in the real life in the real life setting. It's always a blessing to see. I mm-hmm. love it because I would I would just love to just be sitting right next to all of them and just yeah, you know, that would be sick. So like being able to see music videos in like one of your favorite artists standing next to them. Cool. Yeah, no, that was probably the, the no, that was definitely the coolest part of the video was seeing Noodle interact with Schoolboy Q yeah, while yeah, he was while was he was spitting at the mic. Yeah, that shit was tight. Yeah, but yeah, that has been my 
my honorable mention for the day. And this has been our episode of the week. The official episode of the week. Yes, the official. Of course, Comic-Con is coming to an end, sadly. Um, Tomorrow. Also, there has been a big memorial that's been set up right across the street from the San Diego Convention Center in, in memory of, you know, the outside version of Comic-Con. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they set up a memorial. It was so sad. They got that's candles true. and everything. We'll probably put up a, fo- a photo of it up here if we get it for you. But, um, hell yeah. <laughs> they didn't know CR department. I didn't. Uh, that's something I missed. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty crazy. Yeah, that's pretty cool. R.I.P. R.I.P. Uh, San Diego Convention Center, Comic Con. We love you. We always will love you. We got to do the thing. Yeah, yeah. We got to do the thing. Like, share, subscribe. Love us. We love y'all. Leave a comment. Tell us what you think about Karen's. Yeah. 